Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to understand the sizing in SRAM for the read and write operation. We have already seen the working of 6 transistor SRAM. The same diagram is in front of you. I have also taught you how to make the diagram with the cross couple inverters. Here are my excess transistors M3 and N4 and here are my cross couple inverters. I have labeled the transistors rather as M1, M2, M5, M6 etc. And I have called this output of the first inverter as node 1, output of the second inverter as node 2. And we also know that the read and the write stability criteria is nothing but W by L of N MOS should be greater than W by L of excess transistor which in turn should be greater than W by L of P MOS. And because the circuit is symmetric we can show the same for this part also. The only one change which I have made here is on the bit and bit bar line I have connected a capacitor. There is nothing to get confused about that because we already know that when there is an array of memory which is present right at that point of time all the cells would have connected in a column would have their bit and bit bar line connected and that means there will be a lot of capacitance because of this that is shown in terms of CC. Currently it's okay if we don't focus on that we need to understand the sizing. So let's quickly go ahead and do understand this. So first we'll go ahead and understand the read operation. So for the read operation I want to read a zero value which is present at node 1. This is my node 1 which has a value 0 and I want to read that. If this is at 0 that means node 2 would be at 1. That's understood because they are cross couple inverters. And I want to read this. So we have already seen the basic steps for reading. First step for reading is make your bit and bit bar equal to VDD or precharge it to VDD. There is a precharge circuit which will make your bit and bit bar equal to VDD. So I have already done that. So voltage at bit is equal to VDD, voltage at bit bar is equal to VDD. So I have done the first step. The second step is make your word line high. When you make your word line high or equal to VDD, that's the input to your M3 and N4 transistor. So your M3 and N4 transistor will turn on. Word line high, M3 N4 turns on. I got my second step done as well. Okay, so I got the first two conditions satisfied. Let's see now what is present at node 1 and node 2. Node 1 a 0 is present which means an M6 transistor will turn on. And node 2 a 1 is present which is going to inverter 1 as its input which means an M1 transistor will turn on. That's exactly what I have written here. M M1 is turning on, M6 is turning on. And now I am going to zoom into transistors M3 and M1 both of which are on. Let's quickly zoom into them. So here is my transistor M3 which is on, has the input word line at its gate. The other side, this is the drain of M3 which is connected to V bit which is now VDD because we have charged, pre-charged bit and bit bar to VDD. The other side of it is nothing but node 1 which is having a value 0 which we are interested in reading. M1 also is on, it has input VDD which is nothing but node 2 as its input, right? If you look at it, this is the how it is. So it also is VDD. And now we will understand for sizing, we already know that W by L of NMOS in this case M1 is greater than W by L of XS of M3. We already know this. Fair enough. We have already done this. So this is what it is. W by L of M1 is greater than W by L of M3. We have already seen this in the previous clips. Now just one thing before we get into the final sizing. We know M3 transistor is on, one foot of M3 is at VDD, other foot of M3 is at zero. That means there will be charge sharing which will happen, which will tend this point to lose its charge by some value and it will tend to take this point to a higher value from zero. Now we know that we are trying to read this zero, so we don't want the zero to increase to such a high value such that if zero is increased to such a high value, such that it is interpreted as a logic one, then my M2 turns on. So we don't want this to increase to a very high value and for that we need to ensure that the node voltage at 1 should be less than or equal to the threshold voltage of 2 because if it reaches a threshold voltage of 2 the M2 transistor will turn on and if it turns on node 2 will go to 0 that means this, will, this 0 will go as the input here which will turn on M5 which will make my output at node 1 equal to 1 which is not correct because it's the output is 0 and we want to read that 0. So in summary, the node voltage here should be less, though it's increasing, it should be ensured that we keep it less than or equal to the threshold voltage of M2, correct? So how did we come to this size then? 
which we have already discussed. I'll quickly recap. So we have to ensure that this node one stays at zero or stays closest to zero or it is as good as less than the threshold voltage of transistor M2. M3 is trying to increase the value of node one towards a logic high. M1 is trying to decrease the value of node one towards logic, logic zero and we want it to be closer than zero so that we can do the correct reading. And for that, we have to ensure that this guy has to be stronger than this so that this value is kept closer to zero or less than the threshold voltage of M2 and prevents it from turning on. So we understood this, we understood this. Now we are all ready to size. For sizing, we have to find the region of operations for our transistor, sizing equations, correct? Uh, when I say sizing, what I am meaning here is the equation in terms of W by L3 and W by L1, what all parameters will come exactly. So M3, drain is at VDD, gate is at VDD, source. This is node one, which is source. Node one, which is source, which is currently at zero, but due to charge sharing, it might slightly increase, but it's currently at zero. So the transistor is on. Let's find the region of operation. Either it's linear or it's saturation. VDH dash, VGS minus VTN. Drain is at VDD, source is at zero. Gate is at VDD, source is at zero. So this is going to be a greater than or equal to sign because there is a term which is getting subtracted from here. This means that M3 transistor is in saturation. Let's quickly go ahead and see what's happening with M1 transistor. This is a drain. This is a drain which is nothing but node 1 which is at 0 volts which might increase because of charge sharing. Gate is at VDD and this is source which is grounded. Again the transistor is on. We just need to identify whether it's in linear or in saturation. VDS dash VGS minus VTN. So let's quickly see. Drain voltage is at 0. Source voltage is at 0. So this is going to be a less than sign because gate is at VDD. VDD 0. So this is VDD minus VTN which will still be greater than this part so it's a less than sign that tells us that m1 operates in linear region so from here i'll take this equation one equation two and i will take this two that m3 is in saturation and m4 m1 is in linear and now i'm all set to get what i'm looking at so i've already written m3 in saturation m1 in linear we know that w by l of m3 should be less than w by l of m1 which means that k n 3 okay which means that i'll put it more simpler for you w by l of m 3 upon w by l of m 1 should be less than 1 let's see correct so we will try to get this equation in terms of w by l very shortly m 3 is in saturation m 1 is in linear i have equated the values of both their currents i'll quickly tell you why so in saturation kn3 by 2 because m3 is in saturation vgs3 minus vtn the whole square this is in linear k1 kn1 by 2 twice vgs minus vtn into vds minus vds1 the whole square now we know that the voltage at node 1 is 0 but it should be less than or equal to the threshold voltage of transistor m2 and i have assumed that all the nmos transistors have a threshold voltage which is same so vtn2 is equal to vtn so i'm just going to substitute vt v1 equal to vtn in my above equation and substitute gate drain and source and get the final value so let's do that kn3 by 2 gate of m3 is vdd i have written here you can check it from here as well vdd source of m3 is nothing but v1 vdd minus v1 minus vtn this completes my first term the second term is equal to kn1 by 2 twice vgs1 get to source of 1 which is nothing but vdd minus 0 vdd minus vtn and drain to source source is 0 and drain is at v1 for m1 drain is at v1 so into v1 minus v1 square so this is what it is now i'll put v1 equal to vtn when i do that this is what my equation will turn out to be kn by 3 by 2 equal to vdd minus twice vtn correct the whole square equal to kn1 by 2 2 2 will i'll cancel it right now only twice vdd minus vtn into vtn minus vtn square so i've got so from this equation i can easily write the following kn3 by kn1 is equal to twice vdd minus vtn into vtn minus vtn square upon vdd minus twice vtn the whole cube or oh, sorry the whole square and what do we know w by l of m3 upon w by l of m1 we can write that mu n cox 
I beg your pardon. K n three is nothing but mu n c o x w by l of m three, and K n one is nothing but mu n c o x w by l of m one. Correct. So mobility is same. Cancel. This is cancel. That means, and we know that m three and m one it's less than one, right? So I can easily say that w by l in place of K n three I'm going to put w by l of m three upon w by l of m one, which is equal to this value. Correct. Right now it should be less than one. So I can write here a less than sign, and I'll just write the same equation twice v d d minus v t n. I'm just simplifying it. One point five times v t n into v t n. See, this is nothing but v t n v t n, which is v t n square. So twice v t n square minus twice v t n square minus v t n square. That is going to be nothing but minus three v t n square. Exactly same I have done here. Two into one point five is three v t n v t n. So it's going to be three v t n square upon v d d. Minus twice v t n the whole square. Very very straightforward. Only thing what we needed to understand was to find the region of operation. Now let let's quickly go ahead and do the similar exercise for the right operation sizing as well. Now let's continue to understand the right operation sizing as well. We'll do it real quick because we have understood the read operation. In the right operation, let's assume that there is one present at node one initially. One is nothing but v d d. If one is present here, that means a zero would be present at node two. Correct. And what I am interested in is writing a zero at node one. So one is present here at node one. I am interested to write a zero at node one, which is as good as writing a one at node two. So the as we saw the steps for the right operation previously, make your bit equal to zero and your bit bar equal to one through your right circuit. We have already seen this in the previous clips. That means your v bit equal to zero and your v bit bar equal to v d d. Then make your word line high. Or equal to VDD, which means your N3 and N4 transistor will turn on. Currently, there is one at node one. At node one, there is a one which is VDD, which will go to this gate and turn on M2. So M2 is on. There is zero at node two. So this zero goes here and M5 is on. So currently, M5 is on, M2 is on, M3 is on, and M4 is on. And I am going to zoom into M3 and M5 for my sizing. And it's a symmetric circuit, so exactly the same will be for the other half also. So let's quickly do this. I have zoomed into M3 and N5. M3 has one terminal which is nothing but bit, which is equal V bit, which is zero. Its input is nothing but word line, which is nothing but equal to VDD. M5 has node two as its input, which is nothing but zero, and the other terminal is connected to VDD. And this is node one where there is one present, but we want to write a zero. Before we go ahead and understand this, let's quickly understand both these transistors are on. This terminal is at zero. This terminal is at one. So this current will flow. And this node will get discharged towards logic zero due to charge sharing. At the same time, this transistor is also on. This is towards VDD, so this is trying to pull node one towards VDD. So there is a fight, and you want to write a zero. So you want your output to move towards this direction. That means M3 should be stronger than M5. Also, what does this mean is if you want your M3 to be stronger than M5, or if you want to write a node value zero at node one, that means that. If you want to write a zero here, correct? That means M5 has to turn off and M1 has to turn on because this will pull the output towards ground. If this is zero, that means this has to be one, correct? Everyone agrees to that. For M1 to turn on, this has to be one. This has to be one means M6 has to turn on and M2 has to go off. Don't get confused at all. It's very straightforward. Currently, you have M5 and M3 which are on. This is off. This guy is also on and this is off. Now, if you want to change this VDD to zero, that means this N MOS transistor has to turn on, correct? And that also means this M6 transistor has to turn on. Or in simple words, what we have to ensure that is this transistor M2 has to go off. So the node voltage at one should be adjusted in such a way that it goes below the threshold voltage of M2. It should be equal to or less than the threshold voltage of M2. And if that happens, this transistor will go off and this will turn on. So this is what I have written. The node voltage at one should be less than or equal to the node threshold voltage of M2 because I want to make this off. Technically, it should be less than. I have just written for representation to be less than or equal to. If it goes below, then this transistor will go off. Now let's see the region of operation M3. Let's zoom into this. The transistor is on. We have to just find linear saturation. So VDS dash VDS minus VTN. We know that due to charge sharing, after some time, this node and this node both will have the same potential. That means drain and source will have a difference voltage which is equal to nearly equal to zero. So zero 
dash gate voltage is VDD source voltage at that point of time would be as this is the source right so the source is at 0 minus VTN so this is nothing but less than sign which means that my m transistor is in linear region I can also assume my node voltage V1 to be equal to VTN because this is the point of analysis then this is VTN minus 0 which is again going to be less than or equal to this correct so it's a linear region if you have not followed this it's fine let's assume that drain and source voltage will have the same potential after some time m5 region of operation again the transistor is on vds dash vgs minus vtp if you see drain voltage here it's node 1 which is going to go towards 0 or we want to write a 0 so drain voltage is 0 minus the source voltage which is vdd dash vgs gate is at 0 so that's nothing but 0 minus source which is nothing but at VDD so 0 minus VDD minus VTP let's put the values VDD is minus 1.8 1.8 minus VDD is minus 1.8 minus 1.8 minus of minus 0.6 because VTP is a negative value that will make it minus 1.2 does everyone get that so this is minus 1.8 minus of minus 0.6 that is 0.6 positive minus 1.2 this will be again a less than sign correct that means pmos operates in saturation region and mos operates in linear let's go ahead and just equate it like we did for read operation i've written the equation for saturation i've written the equation for linear for m5 i have put what is vg what is source for m3 i put what is gate voltage what is source voltage and what is drain voltage and now i'm just going to substitute this in the above equation let's quickly do that and we just saw that v1 should be less than or equal to VTN so I'm putting V1 equal to VTN and just solving this so KP of 5 by 2 gate voltage is 0 minus VDD minus VTP the whole square equal to KP 3 by 2 twice VGS which is nothing but VDD minus VTN VDS is nothing but V1 which is nothing but VTN so into VTN minus VTN the whole square and now if we rearrange we know that we want this right i can easily write this w by l of m3 upon w by l of m5 should be greater than one correct so we can put this in terms of kn because w by l of m3 is nothing but mu n cox w by l okay we'll do it in terms of kp here and then i'll tell you what we are doing so this is what it is now i'll just rearrange the terms so kp of 5 upon kp of 3 equal to or rather less than because m5 should be less than m3 w by l so this is less than sign twice vdd minus 1.5 times vtn into vtn simple mathematics upon vdd plus vtp the whole square and now if i bring it in terms of w by l now you know that the mobility will change correct so we'll just add that one term also so w by l of m5 upon w by l of m3 the same term with the mobility thing included less than mu n by mu p and then exactly the same term twice vdd minus 1.5 times vtn into vtn upon vdd plus vtp the whole square what I have done is nothing but just put here mu n by mu p when I consider w by l of phi upon w by l of 3. That's exactly what I've done here. So I hope you have followed the sizing in SRAM for the read and the write operation. Stay tuned for further clips and thank you very much.